Taiwan calls on China to allow the resumption of fruit exports. Kim Jong-un urges population growth. Lebanon discovers oldest mosquito in amber, dating to early Cretaceous. COP28 pledge to curb cooling emissions backed by 63 countries. Zelensky cancels U.S. Senate briefing last minute. The largest iceberg in the world finally escapes Antarctica. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funny News. It's Tuesday, December 7th, and here are your top stories. Following the suspension of over two years, the initial shipment of custard apples grown in Taidong is en route to China. China had intermittently imposed bans on a variety of products from Taiwan's farming sector in recent years. The Ministry of Agriculture said on Tuesday that Beijing should return to normal farm trade practices. Acting MOA Minister Chen Junji emphasized Taiwan's commitment to exporting high-quality fruit to any country, including China, affirming an ongoing dedication to international trade. In September 2021, Beijing halted imports of custard apples from Taiwan, citing the detection of mealybugs in the fruit. However, the ban was lifted in June after the Chinese government approved 25 orchards and three packing plants, all based in Taidong, for mainland exports. The MOA minister said the government would continue to use common health inspection standards for various fruits as well, aiming to export them to China despite pending responses from Beijing. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un attended the National Mothers Conference on the 3rd and delivered a speech expressing gratitude to mothers nationwide. He acknowledged the support of his own mother during challenging times, addressing the issue of declining birth rates for the first time publicly. Kim encouraged childbirth, wiping away tears with a handkerchief during his emotional address. The speech resonated with many women in the audience sparking discussions on the leader's rare display of emotion. In a rare move, Kim Jong-un attended North Korea's first National Mothers Conference in over a decade. Wiping away tears, he urged women to counter the declining birth rate, emphasizing collective responsibility. Kim proposed raising children to improve the nation's future and stressed unwavering commitment to socialist values. South Korean officials noted North Korea's concern over the declining fertility rate, 1.79, below the 2.1 needed for stability. Observers suggest Kim's occasional appearances with his daughter aim to encourage more families. Paleontologists have recently uncovered a prehistoric mosquito in Lebanese amber dating back 125 million years. This discovery represents the earliest known mosquito amber fossil and introduces a previously undocumented species. The male mosquito features piercing mouthparts, suggesting a potential blood-feeding lifestyle. This finding provides valuable insights into the diversity of ancient insect life during the early Cretaceous period. In a recent publication in Current Biology, Paleontologists revealed a groundbreaking discovery in Lebanese amber dating back 125 million years. Two male ancient mosquitoes were unearthed, pushing the timeline of the earliest mosquito fossils from the late Cretaceous to the early Cretaceous and introducing a previously unknown species. The researchers found that both males had piercing mouthparts, sharp mandibles, and maxillary palps, indicating a probable blood-feeding behavior. This discovery suggests that not only were the earliest female mosquitoes bloodsucking, but under certain conditions, males may have also exhibited hematophagy. Future research aims to explore the implications of blood feeding in Cretaceous male mosquitoes and understand why contemporary male mosquitoes no longer engage in this behavior.
COP28, the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Dubai, saw 63 countries, including the U.S. and Canada, pledge on Tuesday to significantly decrease cooling-related emissions. U.S. Climate Envoy John Kerry stated, We want to lay out a pathway to reduce cooling-related emissions across all sectors, but increase access to sustainable cooling. The agreement binds countries to cut cooling-related emissions by a minimum of 68 percent by 2050 and sets additional targets such as implementing minimum energy performance standards by 2030. Reuters reported, approximately 1.2 billion individuals in need of cooling solutions currently lack access. The installed capacity is projected to triple by mid-century, spurred by escalating temperatures, expanding populations, and rising incomes. Meanwhile, at least 118 countries are also supporting another COP28 pledge to triple renewable energy and double energy efficiency rates by 2030. The advancement in achieving the cooling pledge goals will be monitored annually until 2030, with regular assessments during the yearly UN climate summits. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has canceled a highly anticipated briefing with U.S. lawmakers due to a deadlock over future U.S. funding for the country. Virtual appearances in both the Senate and House, originally scheduled for Tuesday, were abruptly called off. This decision followed a cautionary statement from a top Ukrainian official emphasizing the risk of losing the war against Russia without additional U.S. military aid. Zelensky was set to provide an update on the conflict's latest developments and advocate for support in a procedural vote expected Wednesday on an emergency aid package, exceeding $60 billion for Kyiv. The cash has been held up for weeks by a dispute in Congress as the White House has warned that existing funds will run out by the end of the year and that Russia's President Vladimir Putin could win the war if lawmakers fail to act. Senate leader Chuck Schumer did not explain why Mr. Zelensky was a no-show. The chamber's top Democrat said the Ukrainian president was occupied with a last-minute matter, without providing further detail. After nearly four decades of being immobile off Antarctica's coast, the world's largest iceberg, A23A, is now in motion. This massive ice island, three times the size of New York City, is expected to navigate towards the iceberg graveyard, posing a potential collision risk with a crucial penguin refuge, before eventually breaking apart and melting away. Satellite imagery shared on X by the British Antarctic Survey reveals that A23A started its journey from its long-standing position in January of this year, covering hundreds of miles along Antarctica's coastline. The berg which has a surface area of around 4,000 square kilometers, was originally berthed in 1986 when IT calved from the Filchner ice shelf. But the hefty berg got stuck soon after when its submerged keel became lodged on the seafloor in the Weddell Sea. On November 25, major news outlets reported that a 23A had finally started to move. However, the Berg's bid for freedom actually began in 2020 when it started to become unstuck from its seafloor tether, the BBC reported. The answer for yesterday was A, accommodate. The roads are built to accommodate gradual temperature changes. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of Lebanon uncovers Otis mosquito and amber, tracing back to the early Cretaceous period. Number 1. Paleontologist after looking at much more recent animal skeletons, paleontologist Jack Bailey of Ohio University ventures a very different theory. Number 2. Piercing. Fonglida, reelida. The animal is covered in long piercing spines. Number 3. Insight. Dongxi, jianjie. The book gives us fascinating insights into life in Mexico. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's all for today's Funding News. Be sure to tune in to Funding News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.